League is one of the most tilting games I have ever played. To get really good at League, you are going to have to deal with mental abuse. People are going to flame you. They are going to ping you. They are going to int you. Um, you're going to have to deal with things that are really, really bad that are outside of your control. Games are going to get taken away from you. People are going to say really mean words. People are going to ping a lot. And this is the hardest part about League. You have to learn to become so mentally resilient to keep playing through the people who are going to int. To keep playing through the people who are going to, you know, flame a lot or ping a lot or soft int or kind of mess you up or smite your cannon or whatever kind of thing they're going to do because they're annoyed. We as an individual are going to have to deal with that. Every single good player in this game will tell you that it's something that they've had to deal with, right? You're gonna have to deal with, you know, thinking you're in loser's queue. You're gonna have to deal with bad MMR. You're gonna have to deal with inters. And today, that's what I want to show you. Today, I have a game where I found this in one of my coaching sessions. We went to go look at auction players in Challenger, and I found this Korean Challenger auction who had one of the most mentally tough early games I've seen in an early like Korean challenger game where like his jungler is just inting, he's getting camped and he's able to come back and carry it. So he has such a good mental and I wanna break this down a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into the VOD. Okay, so here's the game. We got Auction versus Cassiopeia. You can see kind of both of uh, both the teams here. The Auction has the Gragas jungle. We're playing against the Nidalee jungle. Now, I found this game because I was coaching an auction player and we were kind of looking at how auction players play these early lane phases. And I happened to stumble upon one of the most beautiful mental comebacks I have ever, I have ever seen. So um, as we get started here, we're just gonna kind of skim through lane phase. This is pretty normal auction stuff. Auction's a lane bully. So his job is to keep this prio. And what he's doing is he's just, he's making sure he has priority, but he's not overplaying. You know, if he can land a trade, he'll take it. But he's just keeping access to the map. He's keeping priority. He's trying to pull people into him. He's making sure that if his jungle wants to make a play, he's there for it. While we take these kind of trades with Cassio. And now, this is actually a bit tricky. Usually you want to get a ward down by 230. Right, we call it the 230 ward because the 230 gank can come out by the Nidalee. And that's exactly what Nidalee does. And he ends up finding a way to almost get out of it, but he ends up dying. So that's kind of the first part of this game. He missed an early ward timer, which, you know, I wouldn't expect from a Korean challenger, but it happens, right? We all kind of mess something up. He gets punished for it. And that's the first kind of tilting thing. It's like, okay, we messed up, but it is what it is. It didn't actually go too bad because our Greg has saved us. So at least we got something back for it. How can we keep playing this situation from the point we're in? So he comes back to lane and he's doing the exact same thing. He is just pushing. He's keeping priority. He's keeping access to, to roam just in case he sees a good roam opportunity. Of course, making sure to dodge the Cassio Q because if Cassio lands a Q, she kind of just kills everybody. <clears throat> Now our bot lane goes one for one, which is definitely a little bit uncomfortable, but again, that's fine. It's pretty normal. And he's coming down here to hover on the same side as his jungler and his support. He's going to drop vision so that he can play with his jungle and support, right? The reason he's putting it on this bottom side is because this is where his teammates are at. He's thinking about his teammates. He's thinking about setting up the map. And that's what he's really trying to do here. He's trying to play the map. Now, we get a gank from our support, and we get some good poke down on the Cassio. Now, Cassio lands a Q, which means she gets a lot of poke back on us. Definitely very tricky. And we see the Nidalee on the map. So I want you guys to start paying attention to the mini-map. Nidalee is on the blue. Gragas is starting to look for an invade. However, this wave is coming out from the bottom tower. So Caitlyn can't quite follow. So now, Auction sees his team doing a dumb roam. Cassio is here first, right? Cassio P is here. Varus is here first. He knows that his teammates are in a bad spot. Karma dies for this. And that's like, that's, that's kind of upsetting. 
and then he watches Gragas die because there's four people here, right? Gragas was in a 1v4. Now, objectively, you have to know that you have to leave here. Like objectively, everybody knows it's the right play. You should just leave. However, we're tilted because we just saw our teammates die and he does what a tilted player is going to do. He's going to try to get the kill back and then he's going to get ganked for it. And he actually ends up just dying here. And this, oh my goodness, I have seen this situation in my clients so often where your teammates make a bad play that you cannot help. And then you try to go help it and then you die for it and all of your teammates die and you're blaming your teammates and you're blaming yourself and every and this whole game just feels over already. Now it's Korean challenger. So when the game is two to six at five minutes in most of these Korean challenger games, it's over. It's just straight up over. However, what our guy does is he realizes he's tilted. He realizes and he says, okay, he's gonna take a deep breath. This situation sucks. It really does. It's very unfortunate that every single lane is losing. Our jungle is turbo gapped. Our jungle is just absolutely turbo gapped. Um, our lane opponent is ahead of us, even though we didn't have any really say in that. And bot lane's losing because Karma's died twice. Great. Top lane's up a little bit of farm. But he asks, how can we play this situation? Like, what can we do? What can we do from this situation? So everybody's behind, so we have to be a little bit more careful. We're gonna play a little bit slower. And you can see he's deciding to hold this freeze, right? Now he's gonna try to set up some trades. Where before he was just purple pushing, he has slowed down. He's reevaluated. Now, being able to slow down in the middle of a league game, this will save people so much LP. You can see he's still freezing. He knows that he has nowhere to go because everybody's losing. So he's just gonna freeze. He's gonna focus on himself, right? Cassio's bottom, so now he will push to punish the Cassio roam. And that's okay, right? We can't control that anymore because we're already behind. So he's just focusing on what he can control. Now he sees Nidalee mid, and he sees that his Cassio is overstaying bot lane. It's like, oh, they're making mistakes. They're not doing the best job they can to close this game out. Cassio's tried to dive our bot lane for whatever reason. And Auction's able to punish the overplay. Boom, okay, now his team's still behind. Everybody is still losing, except he got a good shutdown. He's gonna crash this wave because he's here and then him and Caitlyn will swap. And he's starting to come back. But that the biggest moment there was after he kind of tilt died in the jungle, he stopped himself and he slowed down and he took a big deep breath. I know a lot of people will get desperate and they will overplay. But when you're behind, you don't get to choose what good plays you go for. You have to wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Now, Cassio made a really big overplay and he punished it. And this is in Korean Challenger. So there are not better players. These are the best solo queue players in the world and they create openings for us to come back as long as we stay patient. And now he's coming back and now he's strong, right? He has serrated Dirk, he has pickaxe, he has a ton of AD, 150 AD. Nobody has a mythic yet. So now he's really strong and we'll see what he does. Now, Cassio is still kind of strong and Nidalee is still strong. We don't know where Nidalee is at right now. So the auction is kind of being respectful. He's trying to hit the wave if he can. It's like he's trying to set up the Gragas gank. And then we get a good play on the Gragas with the Gragas, which is phenomenal. Right? Now in your games, when your jungles are inting, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, have that fancy flash E alt mechanic, right? But you can bait a gank. And he's still playing slow. And you can see, now he's going to look to go bottom. He's not even playing with his jungler. Now, in most games, we always, always, always want to move with our jungler and move to our strong side. 
However, he knows Kindred just, or uh, sorry, Nidalee just did Dragon. And since Nidalee just did Dragon, she doesn't want Gragas to get anything. So she's going to recall, go top, and try to contest this. So he's like, okay, my Gragas is in thing. We can't play around him. The dude doesn't know what he's doing. He's just, he's just straight up lost. So he's kind of finding the opportunity based on what the enemy team is doing. So he assumes that Nidalee is going to punish the stupid Gragas. So he's going to come hover bottom just in case there's a play. Now, there may not be a play, but he's hovering it just in case. And Nidalee actually shows bottom. And he's able to clean it up anyways. Look at that. That's beautiful. This is a fantastic counter gank. This is something that if you go top, you end up losing the 2v2 anyways. Right? But here, we were respecting the counter gank. And he actually, he respected that Nidalee could do both options. Right? In my brain, you know, I'm only North American Grandmaster. So I assumed the Nidalee would be here. But the Nidalee actually decided not to do that. She decided to keep snowing bottom. And this guy was ready for it. So even though all of his teammates are inting, look at this. Top is losing, jungle is losing, bot lane is losing. He is thinking about all of the possible options and he's being safe and slow. And he's saying, look, if you overstep, I will be here to catch you and I will, I will kill you guys. But it's very slow paced. It's very calculated. He's not doing anything desperate. He's just playing really good League of Legends and he's tracking exactly where everybody can be at so that he gets to punish them effectively. And now he's going to start shoving. I think he assumes Cassiopeia backs here. And now he's coming top. Now the beauty of coming top here is you know you're up a person because Cassio is going to come to this mid wave. So even if Nidalee's here for the counter gank, it's still a 3v2. Oh, here she is. And it's still a 3v2, right? So now playing with your jungler makes sense, but it, that takes a lot of effort to know that. So the biggest takeaway is most people would get so tilted, they would just rage roam wherever, and then it wouldn't work, and then they would blame all of their teammates for losing. It's like, yes, all of your teammates are losing. That doesn't mean you have to lose as well, right? You get to find opportunity that can go well. And that's what he's doing. Now Nidalee was here, so they don't get a kill, but that's okay. He's going to keep playing it slowly. Oh, he, maybe he actually does get the kill on the Nidalee. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to freak out if he got that kill. When I first watched this VOD, it was quite a while ago, and we didn't actually watch into the mid and late game. We just watched the early game. So I don't actually know what's going to happen. Uh, what's going to happen next. But the way that he is coming back is so disciplined. That's probably the best word to describe that, is it's very disciplined. He's had the patience and the discipline not to do anything crazy. But he's just taking the free rumps. And his top lane dies again! Oh my goodness! If this was my game, I know I would be tilted. Every single person is just running it down. But he just comes back to lane. He's constantly assessing, how can I do my job? Right, what, what, what can auction do given these circumstances? Sometimes there's not a lot you can do. And here you can see he's just letting Cassio push. His top lane's dead, his jungle's down here, Nidalee has more space. He can't do anything. So he catches the wave. Now he's hovering to make sure that they don't get one shot from behind. Looks like he's taking an all angle on the Varus. I wish I could control this camera, but this is from a YouTube video. I will link the video so you guys can see the VOD in the description. And here's the title. Auction vs. Casio Mid Korean Challenger, patch 13.4, season 13. And he's not forcing anything. He's playing nice and slow and disciplined and it's just so beautiful. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is we're actually gonna skip a little bit. Now his whole team backs, so he's just trying to get them in. He's trying to chill. He's trying to hang out. And he's not forcing. That's the beautiful part, man. When I see my clients play this game, or even when I play this game, we force a lot. We tend to force these plays. 
but you gotta be nice and slow and wait for the opportunity. So their entire team is gonna is playing around dragon, right? You're gonna lose that dragon. It kind of just is what it is. Now, as you push the wave, Cassio's above. Now you have an opportunity to get a pick down here. But he's not contesting the dragon before he pulls the Cassio mid, right? In a lot of our games, if we see the dragons up, we're just sprinting to it, and then we're taking a fight that you guys are losing because everybody's behind. But he makes sure Cassio's mid, and now they have a positional advantage. They end up losing the positional advantage because Caitlyn's not here. And they just have to leave. Now, if he can hold this until Caitlyn's back. Wow. And this is just good execution of his champion. Knowing exactly where he can eat to. And this is why it's important to be very confident on your champion. So you know exactly your limits. That is the other part. If you want to carry bad players, you have to be very good. Now, again, everybody in this game is Korean challenger, so they're all the best of the best. But you can tell this auction just knows his champion just a little bit better than maybe this Gragas knows his champion, or, or maybe the uh, Cassio knows her champion, which is beautiful. Oh, I love that challenger recall, too. <clears throat> and he's not forcing anything. Right, he didn't go all in. He's just, he's doing very, he's making sure if they make a mistake, he's in a good spot to punish it. But he's playing slow and calculated. And that's the biggest key. All right, and we're gonna keep skipping forward a little bit. You know, we're helping doing Herald here because we know Nidalee's bottom and Faris's bottom. Again, only taking smart plays. Plays that can't really fail. Waiting for opportunities. Now, their ADC is still bottom. So they get an opportunity to punish mid lane. With the enemy ADC still bottom. It's a 4v4, so it's an even fight. But the enemy ADC is not here. So we're just top damage, and then our Jace collapses in. It's like, oh my goodness. We're 9-2 and two now. Our team is 14-14. to 14, Right? You take out Auction out of this team. Your team has 5 kills. Auction is the whole team pretty much here. And the way that he's doing this is he's facilitating the right plays. And when the plays are wrong, he's not forcing. Sometimes you have to give, right? He gave some push. Um, we, gave some, we gave some dragons. Both of the dragons. We gave the dragons. right? We gave some kills. But we're sitting in spots where if they mess up there, we're there to come back. Right? It's a patient and reactive style. So, I want to skim through this just so you guys can see that they do actually end up winning this. But the rest of this is going to be pretty cut and dry. He actually dies here. Which is interesting. And Renekton gets the 1000 gold, which is scary. Um, and this is the one spot where the game gets a little shaky again. However, he comes back up on the map and the dude just takes over the game. He keeps getting picks, he keeps rotating better than the opponents, he knows his champion better than the opponents. Look at this, and he just goes around slaughtering the map, man. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And then of course, late game auction with the revives, giving your team more opportunity. Very nice stuff, very good rotations, phenomenal discipline. And they kill Nidalee, and then they get Baron, and then they kind of just siege. And then it's going to take them a couple more pushes, they have to reset again. They do get this mid hit in, and they're going to siege bottom, get the soul, or get the dragon. Then, oh, they don't even get dragon, they just end. Fantastic. And that is how you carry a Korean challenger game when your entire team is inting you. Literally every lane lost, but this auction was able to stay disciplined and, and stay focused. So the most important thing that I want everybody to take away from this game is that League is a cool game. And what I mean by cool is you have to be relaxed, calm, and focused, right? A hot game would be a game you have to be emotional in. You know, maybe if you're like boxing, you get real, you know, it gets hot, right? If you're, uh, you know, you're playing defense while you're playing football, like American football, like you're on that, 
defensive line. That's a hot game, right? You're trying to stop another person. Like you're pushing, you're using your full emotions. You're getting angry. Like that's a hot game. League is cool. It's cool and collected. It's focused. So when a bad play happens, we tend to heat up, right? If your teammates inch you or your teammates make a bad play, we tend to go, ooh, that was not good. That was bad. And we get angry, we get hot. We have to have ways to cool ourselves down. So the best way to do that, uh, that I found for me is breathing exercises. If I see my teammates die, there's this thing called square breathing or block breathing. Um, it's basically where you'll inhale for four seconds, you'll hold it for four seconds, and then you'll exhale for four seconds, right? It kind of like makes a square, right? So you go in and then hold and then out. And this simple deep breathing technique, you do that two or three times, that's going to cool you down. That's going to reduce your stress levels in the moment. And then you can ask, okay, what can I do on my champion to not give any more space, like not die anymore, and punish the enemy mistakes, right? Where are they going? Where does that leave openings in their strategic plan, right? So the, the hardest part about this game is being able to cool down. And if you have some sort of technique to cool you down, um, breathing again is what I really, really recommend. It's probably the best way. Um, use that when you start to notice yourself get heated up and use that to keep yourself disciplined, collected, and cool. So this is a vlog that I thought was incredibly helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.